All right, so I want to continue talking about this show that I saw the other day on Investigation Discovery Network, and it pertains to sexual harassment. So, in the case of Carolyn Nozel and Christopher O'Crowley, I don't think that she did anything wrong by reporting him for sexual harassment, because after all, he was becoming unbearable, like he was following her everywhere on the job, repeatedly calling her and texting. And if I remember correctly, he had even sent her a series of really nasty and offensive texts that, you know, a reasonable person would probably consider threatening. So as far as her reporting the harassment, she did nothing wrong. And no one should ever feel guilty about reporting sexual harassment, provided that they're reporting it in good faith. In my opinion, people who violate others don't deserve any respect, consideration, or mercy, since they're not showing any uh, respect and mercy in return. Actually, they're, they're a liability to the organization, and their harassing behavior weakens employee morale. So I don't think they even deserve a job with the organization since they're putting the entire organization at risk with their fucked up behavior. And they're violating the rights of other people. Another thing is that it also, like when you have, when a company has someone like that on board, it tarnishes the goodwill and the brand image of that organization. So their behavior needs to be checked immediately. And quite frankly, I think people like that need to be released from working for organizations. Because obviously they don't take their job seriously and they don't respect rules, regulations, and they don't respect the boundaries of other people. You know, whenever someone's being harassed, the best thing for them to do is to go ahead and report it so that will prevent it from happening to someone else. Those people need to be put on blast. They're supposed to be responsible adults, so as adults they need to be held accountable for their actions and punished for their wrongdoings. Like I was saying before in the prior video, the situation was kind of like a, a pirate victory of sorts since after she reported the sexual harassment incident, Christopher ended up getting fired, but then she ended up losing her life as a result. I believe that aside from him being angered over losing his job, that there was also, he was triggered by uh, feelings of rejection that, you know, she rejected his sexual advances and that she didn't feel the same way about him that he probably felt about her. That he wanted more out of their relationship than she was willing to, willing to give. She started off as being just a friend to him and I, I suspect that he wanted more out of the relationship. More than she was willing to give, at least. When you think about it, no one ever really expects for a person to go postal on a job site. But in some ways, I believe that all the parties involved, including Carolyn, her fellow co-workers, and her mother and father, should have probably seen an act of violence coming. I'm not blaming the victim here. Um, however, I have a feeling that Carolyn may have overlooked some of the red flags of mental illness and emotional instability in Chris. I feel like she didn't pay attention to her intuition. The reason why I say that is because, well, first off, I feel like her, her mom also didn't pay attention to her own intuition because there was a scene during that show where Carolyn's mother was being interviewed and she was saying how Carolyn and Christopher had stopped at her residence momentarily to look for something. And she noticed that Chris was really acting strangely 
like he was very very extremely socially awkward he didn't want to make eye contact he didn't say much i get the sense that her gut was telling her that something wasn't quite right about chris but for whatever reason she didn't mention her suspicions or her um she didn't mention her observations about him that was the first time that carolyn's mother met chris in person and she probably at that moment knew that something was off about him but she dismissed her feelings you know i could be wrong but i think what it is is that maybe she just decided to not say anything to carolyn about it because she probably didn't want to come across as being meddlesome and um, intrusive in her relationships by mentioning something to her if that's the case, I think it was a grave mistake for her not to follow her intuition. I forget who it is that said this. I don't know if it was Tyler Perry's Medea or Maya Angelou, but there was a quote that came from one of those two people, and it goes something like, when someone shows you who they are the first time, believe them. This guy was showing everybody who he was. He was showing signs that he was mentally ill, he was showing signs that he was emotionally unstable. And it's like they didn't take his erratic behaviors seriously. Maybe it's just that they thought that he was putting on airs, that he wasn't capable of violence. But they should have followed their intuition. Your intuition is a gift. Intuition coupled with fear are like natural protection and survival mechanisms. When your intuition tells you that something is amiss, then it's probably correct. So trust your intuition. On a side note, I personally don't believe in becoming too friendly and overly familiar with coworkers. I've done that in the past, and in most cases it hasn't turned out very well for me. That's another area where I think Carolyn may have misstepped. As I recall, there was one part in that episode where one of her co-workers was trying to warn her or caution her against getting too close to Chris after she found out that he had a lot of emotional baggage and personal issues. Maybe she, I don't know, maybe she thought that she could fi help to fix him or help him to get himself back on track. But anyway... Um, as far as not getting too personal with the coworkers, that's an, another topic for another video. Sometimes it's hard to predict when things like this can happen. Most of the time they happen without any form of warning because there are so many people walking around amongst us with all sorts of undiagnosed mental illness like PTSD. I'm not saying this to stigmatize people who suffer from mental illness. Not all are prone to violence, but there are many who are like ticking time bombs, waiting to be set off or triggered by any little thing without notice. And there have been many cases of people going postal or doing weird shit on the job, like peeing in the coffee pot. I can remember a few years back, I saw this YouTube video of this black lady who went into the refrigerator on her job and she it looks like she had got out a carton of coffee creamer and she squeezed her breast milk inside of the coffee creamer. I shit you not. So people are just strange like that. They're weird. And then they do these things while at the same time smiling in your face and joking and laughing and you have no idea that they're seething inside with anger and resentment and that they're disgruntled. At any moment, they can be triggered to do something hostile or aggressive. Anyway, getting back to the topic, there was a, a part of the episode where Carolyn's friend slash co-worker was talking and she was speaking on how after Carolyn had reported the sexual harassment that she would walk Carolyn to her car and then Carolyn would drive her home 
and it was like a buddy system for them, I guess a way of them trying to remain safe. You know, that tells me that obviously both Carolyn and her friend feared for her safety. So that's another reason why I feel as though Carolyn did not pay attention to her intuition. If she felt that her safety was in jeopardy, then she should have, you know, once again, I'm not trying to blame the victim, but it's like I'm trying to go back in my mind and think of ways how she could have probably prevented her her death. Like I said, obviously she, she feared for her safety. Another question is that comes to mind is what the hell was <laughs> Carolyn's friend supposed to do in that situation? Suppose she had been present at the time of the shooting. What was she supposed to do? All she could do is scream. I'm not trying to be facetious here. But to look at her friend, she's a little small woman, and I don't think she could be any weight more than much more than a hundred pounds soaking wet. So what the heck was she supposed to do in that predicament? And honestly, if she were present, he could take both of them. He could take both of them in a, a fist fight or just shoot both of them. So it's probably a blessing that Carolyn's friend wasn't there on that fateful night. Her life was probably spared because of that. And no man or woman is a match for a firearm or bullets for that matter. So I don't know. I feel like after Chris was terminated from the grocery store, maybe there was something that the grocery store could have done to prevent this from happening like say having an armed security guard there in the parking lot the management had to have known about his erratic behaviors so i believe that's where they may have fallen short as far as making sure that their employees were safe and protected at the same time i'm not sure whether that would have prevented the murder because if someone's determined to get you they can get you especially if you're not mentally prepared to defend yourself and they basically catch you slipping. So if you're ever in this situa type of situation, the best thing for you to do is to make sure you have protection. Like I was saying before in the prior video, go to the police station and file a police report if you feel that's necessary. And also you can go to the courthouse and file for a temporary restraining order and have it served on the person who has been harassing you and go out and get yourself some protection but make sure you check the laws in your jurisdiction and state to find out what what you have to do in order to ensure that you're compliant with the law as far as firearms and weapons are concerned to make sure that you also have all the required paperwork and licenses in order to own a firearm or weapon. So be vigilant. Be vigilant like a sentinel and stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. And that's it. I'm out.